Our historical figure, Thomas Jonathan Jackson, was born on July 21st of 1824. Though he is perhaps more well known by the nickname he earned later in life, Stonewall Jackson. The two main academic sources we have chosen are Stonewall Jackson, The Life and Military Career of Stonewall Jackson by Markenfield Addy, and The Life of Stonewall Jackson by John Easton Cook. A third biography we have drawn from is Rebel Yell by S.C. Gwynn. The members of our group are Mike Mitchell, who has been the group liaison, Kylie Kane, the video recorder and editor, and Amy Shop as the researcher. As a young boy, Thomas endured his share of difficulties. In 1826, when he was only three years old, his father died from typhoid fever, and at the young age of seven, Thomas was sent to live with an uncle on a farm in West Virginia. In 1842, Thomas went to West Point Military Academy. He had little schooling and endured much mocking and ridicule by his fellow classmates at the academy. In his class were some other notable figures, including future Civil War generals McClellan and some more displaying the same determination and cool-headedness that would come to define him in later years. Thomas Jackson went on to graduate 17th out of 59 students. After his graduation, Thomas enlisted in the U.S. Army as a brevet second lieutenant and fought in the Mexican-American War. During that time, he was awarded with promotions for his bravery on multiple occasions, fighting from 1846 to 1848. The Life and Military Career of Stonewall Jackson by Markenfield Addy explains that Jackson retired from the United States Army in 1852 after serving for almost six years. He settled in Virginia where he became a mathematics professor. On August 4, 1853, the quiet and reserved Thomas Jackson married the outgoing L.A. Junkin. She was his complete opposite and the love between them was apparent. It was during that time that Thomas's religious beliefs seemed to have deepened, and his convictions grew stronger. However, they were only married for a short time before tragedy struck. On October 22, 1854, Ellie died after giving birth to stillborn son. Thomas was devastated. It would be several years before he would find love again. He married Anne Morrison on July 16, 1857. They lived happily and would have two children, one of which died in infancy. The possibility of another war soon loomed the horizon. Thomas Jackson dreaded the thought and strongly opposed succession. The biography Rebel Yell quotes him as saying, It is painful to discover with what unconcern they speak of war and threaten it. They do not know its horrors. I have seen enough of it to make me look upon it as the sum of all evils. But the work could not be held back by one man. And though Jackson did all he could do to stop it from occurring, the Northern Army invaded his beloved Virginia in 1861. Thomas Jackson was assigned, was colonel by the governor of Virginia, and in charge of a regiment of infantry, he rode out, leading the group of young soldiers on their first battle, which would be called the First Battle of Bull Run. He would never again set eyes on Lexington, Virginia. Jackson would later receive his nickname during this battle from a general, where he forces where his forces held the line from the Union attacks resembling a stone wall. The Confederate Army experienced several early victories in the Civil War. One of these victories came at the Battle of Bull Run, in which General Thomas Jackson would play a crucial role. In spite of the Confederates falling back under the onslaught of the Union forces, Jackson held his ground, successfully repelling the Union advances. His brave stand inspired the other units on the field, including one led by General Lee, who likened Jackson's unflinching presence to that of a stone wall and used Jackson's example to rouse his own troops to fight just as courageously. From then on, General Jackson would be known as Stonewall Jackson and his men as the Stonewall Brigade. After the battle, Jackson was promoted to Major General for his actions on the battlefield. In the Battle of Chan Chancellorsville, General Lee and Jackson attacked a Union army twice their size. The two split their armies and attacked from different sides of the Union army, causing heavy Union casualties. This was one of the Confederates' greatest victories. However, the battle lasted till dusk, and when Jackson was returning to his camp from a scout, 
From a scouting ahead, he was shot three times from friendly fire as he was mistaken for Union cavalry. Jackson had left his had his left arm amputated and was initially thought to be healing. However, he became ill with pneumonia and died May 10, 1963. General Lee was devastated by the news as he knew he would be missing a trusted general and remarked about Jackson that he was pure, high-minded, unselfish, and has no earthly thought of himself or his own advancement. The sole aim and object of his life is the good of his country. General Jackson is still remembered today for his brilliance as a general during the Civil War. While he did fight for the Confederacy, he was pro-Union until his home state of Virginia entered the war. Thomas was not only known for war, but he was a professor of mathematics in a military college. Thomas Jackson, the unassuming teacher, could quite possibly have gone unnoticed in the annals of history were it not for the occasion of the Civil War. He was conflict which would bring out the military genius that lie dormant in the college professor, and his courage, which would evaluate him in the minds of not only his men, but draw admiration from Southerners and Northerners alike. His courage inspired Americans across the nation during the Civil War, and to this day, Stonewall Jackson's determination to never give up, no matter the odds, is an endurancing legacy.